I wanted to have a chance to talk about some opportunities and ways to set goals and especially at the very beginning of a new year, we're always talking about resolutions and our hopes and dreams for, for the next 12 months. And um, we felt that this would be a fitting topic to uh, kick off uh, 2021 with, especially with what we uh, went through in 2020, which is where we're going to start, which is that we need to shake off, I believe, um, a bit of 2020 and all the things that it gave us um, for better or worse and uh, kind of take a, a new refreshing look at 2021 and think about what we can accomplish um, this year. So in terms of resolutions and goal setting, um, from the larger perspective of psychology, we know that a lot of people make resolutions at the beginning of every year. Um, some of the data that comes out is about about half of Americans really are making a concrete resolution at the beginning of the new year. Um, however, only maybe 10-15% um, of folks end up maintaining them even after three months. So we see this big drop off after two to three months in particular um, of people who go in with gumption and strength and opportunity and optimism. Um, and then after a couple months, those habits kind of dwindle, we fall back onto uh, old habits and um, kind of throw away uh, our, all of our uh, ideas for the new year. Some of the most common pitfalls that are described is that we end up making too many goals. So rather than just having one goal um, to focus on, we have lots of different things, often in different areas, and it's hard to keep track of all those different things and stay on top of them in addition to the things that we normally have to do. Um, if a goal is too far out of reach, so uh, it's a bit too lofty, um, that can prevent us from being able to achieve it, not just because it is difficult, but because sometimes that perception of how difficult it is impairs our ability to engage and be willing to take the small steps to get ourselves there. And speaking of steps, if we don't have a good plan in how to achieve that goal, so if it's too nebulous, it's broad, it's vague, um, or it just isn't well defined, we're going to have more difficulty achieving that and getting there. If we have limited or no options for accountability, so if we have some um, someone there to cheer us on, if we have uh, some way to track progress or monitor how we're um, working toward a goal, we're more likely to stick with it and see it out to fruition. And then kind of the, the bigger underpinning or foundation of goal setting um, is that we should have clear goals, but also an underlying reason for why we're doing this. Um, and often, you know, one of the most common uh, New Year's resolution is weight loss, getting healthier, something in that regard. Um, but if we don't have a clear idea of why we want to do that, other than like, it would be good for me, um, we will struggle to stick with that goal as well. So um, this year, uh, new year, new goals. Um, so thinking uh, if you haven't already done so, or, or this is something you've been pondering lately of what do I want to achieve this year? And um, getting at that last point that I was just making, um, what's important to you and what's important to your values? Because when we think about value-driven goals and setting things that are in line with things that are important to us, we're gonna be more able to stick with those goals, complete them, see them out, um, and also just feel like it's a good accomplishment or it's a useful accomplishment over time. Um, so thinking broadly about what you want to achieve or what type of change would you like to see, um, and then ultimately needing to make a plan. And I'm going to spend a lot of time in this presentation talking about the planning piece in a concept that we like to call SMART goals. So SMART goals, it's an acronym. Um, so SMART standing for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. So you might, if you, if you Google um, SMART goals, you'll see a lot of different uh, variations on a theme here. So sometimes um, uh, time-based might be timely or time-oriented. Ultimately, it's about time. Um, so the very specific or the minutia of, of what T stands for, for example, is, is not quite as important as the overall concept. So I'll be walking through each one of these 
uh, letters and um, uh, components of goal setting today and then give you an example of how to apply this or how this might work for a New Year's resolution or a New Year's goal. So S, S stands for specific. Um, specific goals allow us to create a plan. So a lot of those pitfalls that I was talking about earlier um, often involve lack of specificity, lack of a clear defined goal of some sort. So when we think about specific goals, we are specifying our goals. We need to think through the classic questions of who, what, where, when, and why. Um, so things to ask yourself as you're identifying your specific goal would be who else needs to be involved. The answer might be no one, um, but need to ask yourself whether or not somebody else would help with uh, that, that goal, either the goal setting, um, getting through with the different steps, um, that uh, accountability and having somebody else be involved so that they can kind of oversee or nudge you when you're having um, a, a bit more ambivalence. What do I want to achieve? So this is really getting at the heart of your goal. So what is it that I want to see at the very end? Um, I like to talk about this more as work with the end in mind. So thinking about what do I want to be able to see, vision, experience, feel at the end of this year and then how do I work backwards in order to achieve that? Where will this take place? So if we're talking about a goal, um, say uh, it's more fitness or physical activity, I wanna be more active, less sedentary. I think this is a topic that's come up a lot, at least with, my, with, with some of my patients lately have just been, I've felt this is a very sedentary year. Um, even though I've been trying to stay active, it's just been harder for one reason or another. So where do I want to take, where do I, where would I want that to take place? Would I want to implement more of a home-based exercise regimen? Um, and if so, where is that going to take place in my house? So really think about specifics, not just it'll happen at home, um, but it will happen at home and I have this space identified for it. Um, or I'm somebody who likes to get outside. So I'm going to be doing more walks in the park. Um, what parks? Are there parks nearby my house? Will I need to drive to them, right? So thinking even more specifically than just uh, kind of the easy answer, which might be indoors or outside. Um, when do I want this goal to be completed? So not all uh, New Year's resolutions or, or new goals necessarily have to be year-long projects. Um, some, maybe that is completely reasonable. Also think about if there are smaller steps along the way that might be useful, can you um, put in smaller uh, goal uh, timelines uh, in the year? So maybe breaking up the year into three different parts. Um, and then ultimately getting at the, the uh, heart of why. So why do I want to achieve this? Why is this important to me? Doing some digging into your values um, and why this goal aligns with those because that's gonna be your ultimate motivation toward, um, toward achievement. So move on to M for measurable. So measurement uh, allows us to track progress. Um, this is one of the more, um, I feel one of the more challenging pieces um, to implement. And I, I think that's because um, measurement sometimes is hard to do for some goals that we have. Some are very well designed um, or, or uh, essentially lend themselves to measurement like weight loss or um, watching if we're if we're trying to um, uh, you know drink more water or something there's a you know a goal of better hydration during the day we can easily measure things like that we can measure our weight we can measure our size we can measure how much uh, water we're drinking we can if we want to read more we can measure how many uh, books that we've read but some things are a bit more nebulous um, and more difficult to measure, but there's usually something in there that you can. Um, ultimately asking yourself, how will I know when this has been achieved? So is there some threshold or measure that will tell me that, yes, I have accomplished this? And how much change needs to occur in order for me to accomplish that? So um, is there, you know, if I, if I want to read more and I want to read one book a, uh, a month, then I know that I need to read 12 books in a year. 
et cetera, et cetera. And then will different steps require specific actions? How many? Um, again, breaking those down and whether or not there's specific sub measures along the way. So we were talking about timelines. If there are certain things that you can have a checkpoint at say three months or four months in and see how you're measuring up based off of what you're hoping to achieve in the long term. Attainable goals. Um, I call this the Goldilocks problem um, of goal setting. So attainable goals fall in that really, really nice um, area where it's not too big, but not too small, not too easy, but not too hard. Um, they're, they're right in the middle. Um, so they're enough of a stretch that it's something that goes beyond your typical challenge. It pushes you a little bit but it's not so far out of reach that it's going to seem completely overwhelming. So for example, if you were somebody who's a pretty much a couch potato and you're, you decided that your goal for 2021 was that you were going to summit Kilimanjaro independently by the end of season, well, you probably should have started about a year ago um, and not right now, right? So it's a bit too much of a stretch. Now, maybe doing something smaller might be completely reasonable for this year, pushing off Kilimanjaro for a year or two from now, once we've actually learned how to hike appropriately, let alone ice climb. Um, so thinking about what is within reach and then what's one step or maybe two steps beyond that is, is a nice area to look for. Um, the other piece of attainability is whether or not you have the resources that you need to achieve it. And it's not that you have to have all of these things at your disposal right here and now, but whether they would be attainable some along the way or you know where to get them. So in the event of, um, I'm gonna be talking about the, the goal of reading more later, but do I have the resources? Do I have access to books? Do I have access to, um, information about books that might be useful um, and if not how do i go about doing that so if i've um, never if i want to use the library for example but i've never had a library card well that's step one then i need to get the library card so that i can get to the library right um, so attainable looking at both reasonable stretch and then also resources that would allow me to work on this goal relevant. Um, so relevant goals align with your values and ultimately your long-term objectives. So without that underlying attachment to our values, we're going to have a much harder time coming back to a goal when we get off track and saying, this is really important to me and this is why I'm doing this. Um, so questions to ask yourself would be like, is this meaningful to me? Or kind of, why am I doing this? Am I doing this for myself? Am I doing this for someone else? Am I doing this for insert the blank. Um, and if it's not something that's really resonating with you or driving with you, then kind of question whether or not this is an appropriate goal for right now, um, or maybe it needs some tweaking. Another thing to think about is whether or not this particular goal would delay or prevent you from completing something that's more important, more pressing, um, or something that might be better aligned with what I want to accomplish long term or maybe just within this year. Um, so would this be actually getting in the way of something that's more important? So if you have competing ideas or competing goals, thinking about what might be most relevant now, most important now, um, and thinking about the right time. So is, is right now the best time to accomplish that or would it be best maybe pushing off for a little bit? You can get yourself into a little bit of a trap here where it's very easy to procrastinate and push things off. Um, so it's important to have a very honest conversation with yourself about whether this is really the right time or whether this is just me pushing things off because they seem hard. So T, uh, our last letter, uh, standing for time-based, timely, time-oriented, time in some regard. Um, goals that have some clearly defined time frame, schedule, and plan usually are more successful. So in this case, if you're thinking about an actual clear annual goal, something you want to accomplish by the end of the year, then you have a very neat deadline of December 31st, 2021. 
that being said, there are many goals that do not require an entire year. And maybe you have um, a smaller goal that you want to accomplish in order to um, kind of daisy chain onto a next step. Um, so thinking about if you have a very, a much larger goal, um, how you're going to accomplish it maybe in steps and then clearly defining those, those timelines there. Um, I think about folks who are, um, so for example, I, I am a solidly mediocre triathlete, um, always finished dead in the center of the pack, never have won a medal in my life, probably never will, that's totally fine. Um, in order to get me to being able to just finish a race, um, I had to start somewhere, which was I needed to um, figure out how to do the run, the bike, the swim, not in that order, um, but I needed to be able to do all three of those things individually, right? Then needed to put them together and then understand how to transition between those different tasks. So when I was working toward that goal of being able to complete a triathlon race, I wanted to first figure out how it was going to do each of those three different components. And I had different time-based goals for those things. And then I was gonna put them together so that I could ultimately do this um, and successfully cross the finish line. Um, so asking yourself, how long will, should this take? Um, can I achieve this? And then again, any checkpoints or sub goals that you might want to um, set in line uh, for the longer term plan. So I'll walk through this with one idea of wanting to read more, because this is something that a couple of patients have brought up to me more recently, is that they felt that they fell off their reading bandwagon um, last year for one reason or another, and that they, um, even though reading is something that they were passionate about or really enjoyed, really enjoyed in the past, um, that they just felt like for whatever reason, things were getting in the way and they weren't able to read as much as they'd like. You can insert any type of hobby for reading, I feel, in this, in this example. Um, and if there's a hobby or an interest or something that you you found has fallen by the wayside, uh, I think of people who, you know, often are some of our people who like painting and photography, some of our creatives, um, or, you know, gardening, um, even just kind of keeping up with uh, some genealogy tasks that you had put to the side and are gathering dust for a while. Um, so walking through the smart pieces. So for specific, um, uh, I said here, I want to return to a regular reading habit. So I want to read more novels this year. And I'm saying at least 24 um, by the end of the year. So that would equate to about two per month. So I'm asking myself those who, what, where, when, why questions. In this case, who it would be just me. Um, I don't feel I need to incorporate anyone at this point, but perhaps um, something along the way, if it was more involving maybe a book club or something, if I wanted to make this more social, I had that, um, but maybe that's not uh, something that's super important at the get-go. Um, what is that I'd be reading um, more books and specifically I've identified novels rather than something else, say like newspapers um, or magazines. So I'm being very specific. Um, where um, I would say that reading takes place in my house. Um, I'm somebody who likes to read at the end of the day, um, kind of before I go to bed. So I'd be reading on my couch in my, in my living room um, prior to bed. And then um, uh, when I'm already kind of identified closer in the evening and that this would occur over the year. And then my why is kind of that this is an important habit. I really enjoy reading. I, I enjoy, um, uh, learning about new authors. I find it important to me to have a habit of reading and experience books. Then we move into measurable. And some of these you'll notice that specifics with who, what, where, when, why tend to trickle down into the other, um, the, the MART, M-A-R-N-T. Um, but for measurable, when I think about the larger context that's coming under specific, which is 24 books, then I want to have something of kind of like a pace. And this is going to help me keep track of how I'm doing on progress. So I'm going to say that I'm going to read two books per month. And so that will ultimately get me to 24. And then I also probably want to set some sort of a goal to make sure that that happens. So that I'm not at the end of a month and saying, oh no, I haven't read a book in the past two months and now I'm behind and what am I going to do? So I need something to keep me accountable um, and uh, on track for the measurement. So I'll set a goal for reading at least 15 to 30 minutes per day. 
Maybe that might be longer on some days, could be shorter. And then I could either track this um, in a diary of some sort, I could write it down um, uh, because I happen to be um, a reader. I really enjoy the app that's called Goodreads, which allows me to track not only the books that I'm reading, um, but allows me to input progress in a book, which is nice. Um, and, and helps to keep me on track. So whether you're doing this just by writing it down on a list um, or on a whiteboard um, in, your, in your journal or diary or in some other type of app that helps you track whatever you like to do. Then is this attainable, right? So attainable, attainability had two different components to it. One is whether um, this was too much of a stretch um, and the second being whether or not I had resources. So I did not feel that uh, two books a month was out of my reach, I'd say maybe this year, um, I was able to, let's say, um, I was able to read about one book per month or kind of averaging one to one and a half. That two would be more, but not exorbitant. So I didn't wanna go down the route of saying uh, 52 books a year, which would be right one every week. That might be my Mount Everest Kilimanjaro uh, level. Probably a little bit too much, might be overwhelming and that I might be really downhearted when I'm failing at my goal, you're, you know, at, week three, um, best to find something in between, right? So 12 would be not enough, 52 is too many. Um, how about 24? That's kind of that Goldilocks uh, zone. And then thinking about attainability from resource perspective. So how am I gonna be able to obtain these things? So I already have a library card and I want to go to the library um, so I can save some money and, and go to the books. The library is an easy walk from my house so I can get a few steps in while I'm doing this. Um, and then making a list of some of the books that I want to read. Maybe there's already some that are um, on my shelf already. Um, and then how I'm gonna go about uh, getting them. So in this case, mostly borrowing from the library or some other way, um, little free libraries or borrowing them from friends um, uh, or purchasing them. Uh, relevant, so what is, what's my why? Um, so my why is that I've enjoyed reading in the past, would like to get back into this habit. Ultimately, it's really important to me to explore new genres, learn about new authors, um, kind of build vocabulary. And it's just something I really enjoy getting lost into a story. Um, so that's my why. And that's the piece that I can come back to if I start to um, diverge and, and not maintain my pace. I can say, why did I do this in the first place? Or why did I said this is important? And then time base really uh, trickles back to specific and measurable in this case, um, stating that I my goal for this is going to be for the end of 2020, so December 31st, and that I will have that 24 books um, by the end. So that's kind of one way, one example of, of walking through um, a SMART goal for the purpose of um, uh, Kind of, uh, of identifying all the different parts. Some things, some things to help you um, do this, you can obviously do this on your own just by asking yourself some of these questions. Um, what's nice um, about the internet right now is there are many, many different templates for SMART goals. Um, they all look a little bit different, but this is one example. So if you were to Google um, SMART goal template, you might find something like this where you can print it out or you can make your own um, that can help you walk you through those different steps and have a really clear plan. Tuck this away so that you uh, can have it to look back on if you fall off track or you forget why you were uh, doing something or what your, uh, what your specific plan was. Um, so highly recommend something like this to keep it all organized. So those are, that's, those are my tips um, that I have for you. Uh, I hope that um, it's helpful as you're thinking through your, your goals and resolutions for 2021. I hope everybody has a safe, happy, healthy, delightful, goal-filled new year um, and that things are a little bit brighter come January 2022.